Today, some of your favorite girls from America's Next Top Model are revealing some of the darkest secrets of their lives, things that they have never talked about before. And these top models, like millions of other young women, have some shocking stories of abusive boyfriends and even of rapes that they have kept hidden for years. And later, the winner of Top Models Cycle 8, Jazlene, is going to reveal a stunning secret that even I did not know. Please welcome from America's Next Top Model, Cycle 10, Dominique. So, Dominique, on Top Model, you were the girl that was very opinionated, this big personality. People got a lot of laughs enjoying watching you and a lot of joy seeing you take beautiful pictures. But there's something else that was going on in your past that we did not know about. Um, and it was an abusive boyfriend. So, so tell me, tell me about that. Tell everybody about that. Well, when I was 19 years old, um, I was getting out of a bad, an old relationship that wasn't really abusive, just wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess I was looking for love. I was wanting a family. I was wanting to feel like somebody could love me more than I guess I love myself. You didn't love yourself then? No. no. I, you know, I think I was wanting somebody to prove to me to show, so I could show myself that, hey, you know what, Dominique, you can love you too. Mm -hmm. You know, just wanting so much that I wasn't giving myself. So at 19, I got caught up. And in the beginning, it's never abusive. In the beginning, it's, it's, it's fun. Happy it's, and good. it's happy and so good. So you moved in with him. In three months, you guys moved in together. Mm -hmm. And when is the first time that he hit you? Do you remember the first time? The abuse, the physical abuse, really didn't get started until um, I found out I was pregnant with my daughter. And it started out with, you know, talking rough to me, you know. What type of stuff would he say to you? You know, just call me, you know, or, you know, it was just the words that slipped out of his mouth that you never thought, you know, a man that loves you would say to you. Mm -hmm. Take me back to the day when he punched you in the head and you blacked out. I found pictures in his phone of other women, and it was very racy images. And I just remember I was like eight months pregnant, and I was going through a really hard time when I was pregnant because I almost died. Um, it's okay. Come on. And I was just really wanting to hold on to, to hold on to life. I was trying to really hold. I was trying to make it with my baby, my first child, and I just remember him just turning it and reversing it on me and I just remember him on top of me and he just like punched me on and the in the back of my head and he was like eight months pregnant yes and he was punching me in my back and spitting on me and just calling me a <laughs> and everything else and it was just really hard and when you're pregnant and you're trying to make it work and you know at the same time I don't know if, like you know what's gonna happen with my pregnancy because I was so ill mm -hmm. I was just hold, trying to hold on to life that's all I could think about it wasn't necessarily so much abuse golly why is he doing this to me but I wanted to hold on to the life that mm -hmm. I was carrying so and what are you thinking when a man is beating you What's going through your mind? Are you in your head? Do in you my mind? <laughs> it's like, when I blacked out, it's like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Because it's like, you know what? At that point, the only thing that's left in you is to fight back. Mm -hmm. And I, it, where, where that goes is very scary. I knew that, you know, it was getting to the point where it was either me or him. That you were going to kill him. Well, it was getting to the point where I had to, either I was going to die mm -hmm. or I was going to protect myself. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Tell me after you had the baby and there was another incident, you were holding your daughter, you had the baby, and what happened when you were holding your daughter that day? Um, you know, she was really small. I just remember him coming up to me. You know, he wanted to go out, and I was just wondering. Oh, she's adorable. <laughs> Thank you. I was just wondering, you know, like, why don't you want to stay home with, you know, us and the family? You know, he would always like to be out all hours in the night, never would mm -hmm. want to come home. And I just remembered him just punching me in my face while I was holding my child and just spinning on me and just saying such He mean... punched you in... Wait, let's hold down. He punched you in your face. In my face. You were holding your while baby. I was holding my baby. And the fact that he could do this in front of my child, I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing to myself? Uh -huh. What am I doing to my child? And his child. And his child. Yeah. But most of all, it was like the things that I'm struggling with right now, I cannot... I just did not want to see my daughter going through the same battles eternally, trying to find her self-esteem, mm -hmm. dealing with all these issues. Because that wasn't the only time that he dangered the child. It, it was just a thing of just, I don't even remember what the argument was. A lot of times it was just him creating a different scenario. Mm -hmm. And um, he just threw the lamp at me and it landed on her car seat. And if her little handle wasn't up, it would have hit her. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's these things that we don't think about, you know, now that I have this child, I care so much more for my baby. You left him? Yes. And then one day you saw him in a restaurant, and he was your ex-boyfriend. It, it was about over, it was like over a year. Over a year. You guys ended up getting into a fight in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And tell me what he did to you. He punched me in my face, and he was spitting on me. He was hitting me in my back. He busted my tooth, and it cracked all the way up to the root, and like a chunk of my tooth just fell out. Wow. Dominique's mother, Delon, is here with us today. Did you know your daughter was going through all of this? Um, no, not at the time. I, I wasn't aware that mm -hmm. uh, she was being physically abused. 
I felt she was being emotionally abused because she seemed he had isolated her, and so I felt like he was really manipulative. Yeah. There was a lot of emotional abuse. And as a mom, you feel helpless because here's your daughter. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. you were her mother, and you were supposed to protect her. But mm -hmm. when a child is like, I'm in love, and this is yeah. what I'm doing, it is a helpless feeling mm -hmm. for you. It, it's very hard. I mean, I, my heart was broken, but then I said, you know what? What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Yep. And at that point, um, I just provided a safe place for her to have evolution and expl mm -hmm. exploration of herself. And she did. Finally, she came home, and that was it. Now, you did this order of protection mm -hmm. because he threatened to kill your family. Yes. And there were certain things that you did, and mm -hmm. I, I think this is amazing. You right. went into mama protect mode. Oh, honey, mode. yeah. He, he said he was going to kill me and take me out. So I called the police every time that he would say that. And it must have happened about 50 times. Wow. And so um, then I got an order of protection until um, 2011. And then tell us the things that you started. You started carrying things. Okay, I took a class to carry a pistol. I started packing. <laughs> I had steel toe boots. I carried daggers. I had mace, I had pepper spray, and I was ready for the moment. Um, I wasn't worried about going to jail because I figured I might have a ministry for prison. But at that point, I was ready to defend my daughter at any means possible. And it wasn't to suffer and die, but to live. And I wanted my grandchild and my daughter to be safe. Mm -hmm. So I took the power back, you know, and at that point... Um, to protect yourself, yes, protect but at the same myself. time did not exactly. go crazy and knock on his door oh, no, and do no, 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 because no, then we'd all be going right. to jail, and that's that right. wouldn't be right either. Right. We'll be right back. <laughs> Every 60 seconds in America, a woman is being sexually abused, assaulted, or attacked. During casting for Cycle 9 of Top Model, one of the girls revealed something her own mother didn't know until the show started. Take a look. Until the show aired. Take a look. I hear that you've been through a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff in your life. Yeah. Tell me about growing up and all the things that you went through and all the tragedy. I went through a lot as a kid. I've been just passed off to family members a lot. So I was always having to adapt to new people, new places. A lot of people have done a lot of bad things to me. Why don't you talk about that? I was molested, raped. So much has happened to you. What makes you strong enough to still stand here right now in front of us Jeez, so vulnerable? God. God has definitely given me strength. He's helped me. There's been times when I've been like, Lord, what am I going to do? And next thing you know, it happens. Joining us is Marvita. That feels like a long time ago, Marvita. I know. I wow. look different. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're beautiful then. That's why you're on Top Model. I saw, I saw beauty. But I want to um, talk about, there's a lot of things that happened to you. You were abused by a male relative. At what age? When I was four years old, um, my mom took me to one of my relative's house, so cute. and um, he would have me sit on his lap, and he would try to, make, try to make me do things or try to touch me, and it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. It felt gross. And it happened for how long? It happened for a few years. For a few years, and you never said anything? I never said anything. I was scared, mm -hmm. and he used to, like, he would just tell me, he'd be like, you better not tell. Mm -hmm. You tell, I'm going to whoop you mm -hmm. or something. And then that was a male relative. But the abuse didn't stop with the male relative. No. Like, every weekend in the same household, like, another relative, she would come over. She? Yeah, she would come over and hold me down and do things to me and molest me. And she was only five years older than me. And I couldn't, like, fight her off because I was a little kid. And she was bigger than me. And she would always tell me if I told, then I would get in trouble. But I told on her anyway, and nothing happened. Nobody did anything about it. You know, I'm glad that you're talking about it, that it's a female that did that to you because we, we often hear about men doing it. We hear that all the time. And I think it's important for people to know that if a female does that to you, it is just as wrong. It is. It is just as wrong. So abuse from a male relative, se sexual, sexual abuse from a female relative. Then at eight years old, something happened in a park. When I was eight years old, um, some friends of one of my other relatives came over and I was used to them always coming over. You know, they were older boys. and. They came over the house one day, and I trusted them. They were like, yeah, let's go to the park. Come on, Marvita. It was three of them. And they took me there, and they raped me. All three of the boys raped you? All three of them. They were like 12 and 13, 14. And as this is happening, because this is insane to me, eight years old, you know, eight years old, little girls don't really even know what sex is. Yeah. So what were you thinking as a little innocent eight-year-old when these dirty boys are on top of you and doing that to you? What's going through your head? I couldn't think anything. The only thing that was going through my head was, this is happening to me, but mm -hmm. it's gone further than it's ever gone. Mm -hmm. And I can't do anything about it. So after that happens, these three boys rape you, and then you leave the park. 
I left Where, the park. Where'd you go? And I cried, and I cried, and I cried. I was scared to go home. Were you in pain, physical pain? I'm sure. Yeah. How do you hide that from your mom? She was, she was in a different state, because mm -hmm. she was in Alaska at the time, and I was in California, and I was so scared. And I went home, and I just took a shower, and I felt so dirty and so gross. I didn't know what to do. Didn't I just didn't feel like me. Marvita's mother, Renee, is here. So I know that you have, your first reaction was anger when you found out, and when you found out that she didn't tell you. I was very angry that she didn't tell me. I didn't know, actually, until the show what happened. Until Top Model. And when it came out, Top Model came out. And I was angry that she didn't come to me. But then again, I understand the fact that she was afraid. Mm -hmm. But as a mother, and she knows how I am, I would have caught a plane and probably made sure I pressed charges and probably did some mm -hmm. bad damage. And then it got really bad, and you didn't know, yeah. and it got even worse for your daughter in her life. This is before Top Model. At 16 years old, it got so bad. Your depression got so bad because of all this abuse. What did you try to do? I tried to kill myself. I tried to kill myself several times, but how that was times? the one time a lot. Tell me about this time you said it was the worst when you were 16. I was, I went to school that day and I was just like, I just want my life to end. I didn't even understand. I didn't, I didn't want to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. I wanted my life to end, so I just took a whole bunch of pills and I just drank and I drank and I drank and I drank and I went to school and I just basically OD'd because I was out of it. At school? At school. Did you pass out? Yeah, I was school. out of it. If, had not, if it wasn't for one of my friends from high school helping me and trying to revive me and picking me up in the bathroom, mm -hmm. it was like, girl, come on, you got to wake up. I would have been dead. You would have been dead. You would not be here now. No, I what be made here. you share your story on Top Model? The fact that there may be someone out there that this has happened to worse or in the same case as mine that mm -hmm. I can help. And I just felt like, you know what? Somebody needs to know I'm not taking this anymore. This is where I'm supposed to be. And this is supposed to be my life. Do you know that you're a different person now than you were when you tried out for Top Model, that even that first time you tried out? And I think a lot of it has to do with you airing what has happened to you because now you're not a victim. Now you are empowered and you're empowering other people. And there is a different Marvita that I see in front of me and a Marvita that I'm super proud of. It's not easy at all, but some of your favorite top models are speaking out about abuses that they have suffered in the past. Last season on The Tyra Show, the winner of America's Next Top Model, Cycle 8, Jasmine, surprised a 17-year-old girl who was a victim of domestic violence with her own confession. Check it out. Tell us about your relationship, because you know, I knew about it when you it tried out the first time for Top Model. Something difficult that a lot of teens go through. You know, we all fall into relationships. Why? Because we go in there without knowing what takes place in a healthy and an unhealthy relationship. And how old so, are you? of course, I was about 18 years old. First going love? Through it. My first love, my first everything. I mean, I was growing up, experiencing life, and you know, I mean, the two main factors uh, about abuse is controlling power. So, you know, a woman like me who was very vulnerable and being so loving that he just, he was able to control me. Mm -hmm. And that's where things led into abuse. You know, it started with, you know, it, a, a slap then to a punch, you know. So I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is not me. I have plans. I have goals in my life. And that's what I'm all about. I did seven months of therapy, gained knowledge on domestic violence. And now I stand here as a winner because of it. Yeah, good. <laughs> The interesting thing is, uh, first of all, I, I'm really happy that Jasmine is here today. Um, and I'm not faulting her, and I'm not going to attack you, but um, you weren't telling the truth when, that day. Um, well, yes, I have a confession. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, with my ex-boyfriend for four years. Um, he did uh, hit me and, you know, went through emotional abuse. And, um, but I ended up going back to him. Um, I, after my win, I was just like so focused about speaking about my story and being a part of organizations, you know, to just pretty much make myself feel like I was out of it. And um, unfortunately, I did fall back. And you weren't in it. We actually got um, Jasmine help. She auditioned for Top Model the year before she won. She did not make it because she was in this abusive relationship and we felt she wasn't healthy mentally enough to compete in Top Model. She came back the next year and won. So after that, we're, you know, off camera, we're talking, and I'm like, I'm so proud of you. You got out of that bad relationship. And you're like, yeah, Mama Tyra, I got out. So how did you feel uh, being not truthful with me and knowing that you were still with him? Um, it hurt me a lot, yeah. actually. Like, it was, it was a deep secret, you know? And my thing was, though, that I went on the show. It's going to be very hard. I'm sorry. I don't want to be a baby cry. But, no, it's um, not a baby cry. Jessalyn, that's not a baby cry. This is real. It's OK. Um, so 
you know, I didn't find out in, that I was in a abusive relationship until I was listening for America's Next Top Model and speaking to a psychiatrist. So I went along with that story, and that's why I felt like, you know what, with the success of my win, I, I can use this as a platform to help and educate young teens about the situation. So that's why I went on and speaking about it, but I had, it was such a burden on me because I didn't want to lie to you. I respect you so much and I appreciate so much you've done for me, Tyrell. I tell everybody this because you have taken me to places and shown me the world now. And so that's why it, it hurted me and I just like, and I, and I, when I talk to my, my fans about this situation, I'm like, how phony am I? How hypocritical am I? But it is a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I am willing to stand here and accept my mistake, and that's why I'm open about this, mm -hmm. and I want to tell you the truth, you know? But, but, but this is, but Jasmine, when you are in a, whether it's alcoholism, and there's an alcoholic that's helping other alcoholics get mm -hmm. through it, they may be a recovering addict, but sometimes they slip up mm -hmm. and go back to drink the alcohol. It doesn't make them less of a leader. It makes them more human. Do you understand? Definitely. So that, that is part of the cycle that you got pulled in. And it doesn't make you a bad person. And I don't even think it makes you a liar. Because part of abuse is living in this weird world and almost lying to yourself. So when you were not telling the truth to me, I don't think you were lying. I think you were still in that cycle of hell. Does that make sense? So I forgive you. I want you to know, I forgive you. you. Come on. with him are you really broken up or are you yeah okay. I live in New York I know I stand here strong and I can say that I am still I I still believe in being a spokesperson for uh, Liz Claiborne Love is Not Abuse and helping and educating young teens about this mm -hmm. situation did he hit it you again? was yes it he was hit you abuse. again when you went yeah back. so he did it and um, you said it was, yeah it was definitely stop. one of those where I just stood back and I was like no you no know more. what like it's not gonna happen no more okay we'll be right back are sharing stories of the abuse that they experienced at the hands of boyfriends, relatives, and strangers. Now, in the history of America's Next Top Model, only three girls have quit the competition outright. Uh, there was Cassandra from Cycle 5. Cassandra uh, quit because she didn't want to cut her hair. There was Ebony from Cycle 9 that just felt like the pressure was too much. And Kimberly from Cycle 10. Kimberly said it was because of high fashion, but there was another reason. But let's go back to that day on, to on Top Model. I'm glad to see you smile today because the other day you looked like this. A squished up snot of your old snot nose rag. She looked bored to death. She looked like she didn't want to be here. Do you want to be here? To be completely honest, like the whole fashion thing, I'm not, it doesn't interest me at all. Ooh, so why did you come here? Ooh. Why did you come here? I learned how to like express some pictures, but like the whole like, you know, like designer thing, like I don't know about designers and it's just, you know. Let's go back to casting because it just happened. And there were 20 girls standing there in that room when I was handing out your diplomas. And I had to leave six girls there crying. And here you are in this place saying that this is not something that you're passionate about. I'm just being honest. Like, I don't, you know, I don't believe in the whole, like, you know, I need to wear designer outfits and, like... But you don't need to wear designer outfits as a model. Well, I know that, but I'm just saying, like, that's why I wasn't, like, it just, I don't find it interesting. Do you want to just go home? Yeah. All right. Go home. Thank you. Yeah. I was so shocked when you said that you wanted to go home, and I thought it was so... Because you don't like high fashion, and that you don't want to wear, like, I know. fashionable clothes. Hard. You don't have to wear expensive fashionable clothes as a model on your personal time, you don't. That's what I was saying. What are you doing? That, I thought yeah. you were out of your mind. But it wasn't about high fashion. That's why it sounded so crazy. Yeah. So tell everybody what it was really it about. It sounded so crazy because it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that I look back on it, I'm like, oh, my God, that was so silly of me to do. But... The real reason was um, three months before the show, um, my ex-boyfriend committed suicide. It was by far the hardest thing I've ever gone through. Mm. And at that point in my life, it was so sudden, and I rushed into the whole top model thing, which I actually, I love fashion. <laughs> I loved being there, I loved meeting Tyra, and I wanted it so bad, but I didn't feel good on the inside. Mm -hmm. I was a mess. And, and if you don't feel good on the inside, you can't be yes. okay on the outside. And, and in hindsight, I'm so happy that you left. Yeah. Because I don't want you to be feeling sick inside and going through something so traumatic and having to put a smile on your face and right. sell some earrings on right. the show. And these earrings are cute. And I'm like, that's not, that's yeah. not what the competition is I guess when about. I was get going to audition, I'm like, I think this will be a great stepping stool to get away from everything and it will help me. But, mm -hmm. you know, I got there and I'm like, this is just overwhelming. It makes it I, worse. I can't do this right now because mm -hmm. all I have is 
the death on my mind. And uh, your ex-boyfriend was not the first person in your life to commit suicide. No. Um, when I was in seventh grade, my mom committed suicide. So it kind of even made it worse mm -hmm. because I started feeling like, oh my God, what am I doing to people? Why is everyone around me dying? And mm -hmm. I got into into a pretty bad depression and a lot of anxiety. I was in and out of the hospital having panic attacks. Mm -hmm. It was hard. And so your mother was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Right. And I'm sure had some other issues too she did. to make her commit suicide. Yeah. So it was almost like you were attracted to somebody that was similar to your mother, right. this boyfriend. Did he have bipolar disorder? He was. He was bipolar. He was bipolar. And you I know you said that his sickness made you sick. What does that mean? It did. Um he was bipolar, so he was always up and down, mm -hmm. which is hard to be around with someone like that. I mean, he would be the funnest person to be around. He loved life, and all of a sudden, he would crash. And being around someone like that is so hard because when he would crash, I would come right down with him. Mm -hmm. And he was addicting to drugs, and I always thought, it's okay, I can save him, I can save him. And for the longest time, I stayed in the re relationship thinking I could make him better. Mm -hmm. And then he died, and it really made me crash. And you said that now you're trying to move forward and reclaim your life. I am. Yeah, tell me how you're doing I am that. trying, you know, I've been in therapy for a really long time, um, which definitely has helped getting mm -hmm. it out there and talking about it. Because even on Top Model, I didn't want to come out and say, I can't do this because I thought it would make me look really weak. Mm -hmm. And I know being a model, you have to be fierce and confident. And I just didn't want that image. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to tell all of you guys, it, it, it takes very strong women and brave women to audition for America's Next Top Model, to go through that critique, to face rejection and to hear, you know, you're not good enough for this, you need to pose better for this, you need to do this to do that. But to me, what is more honorable, what is more noble, what is more beautiful is what the four of you guys have done today. That you have exposed yourselves, that you're vulnerable, that you so that you guys are victims of something, but that you're not carrying being a victim for the rest of your life and that you're empowering young girls that are going through the exact same things that you guys have gone through. And I applaud you as your godmama. You guys are welcome. We'll be right back.